This episode of the Soupcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Great seasonings over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com, such as the Kerry Steak, the Savory Cajun, Snoring Heat, and the Brits Blend. There are many, many seasonings that would fit all of your, your barbecue words. Um, in your life um, over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Again, again, that is the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. While you're there, be sure to use that promo code Sloopcast10, Sloopcast10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Also, check out the Mad Canadian's uh, social media sites, Facebook and Twitter, to find out where he and his food truck are heading to next. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is an Ohio-based micro-batch roast company that is veteran-owned. Uh, all their beans are USDA organic, fair trade certified. And I know I said they're from, high, from Ohio already, but I did not tell you that they are from Harrisburg, Ohio, which is just outside of Toledo. Uh, there you can get free shipping over $50. There's a subscribe and save service. If you find that, you know, there's one or two coffees that are your coffees there. There's a, like I said, you can subscribe and save. Um, they have, um, let's see, uh, world-class hand. Yeah, I did all that. Uh, they have a bunch of great coffees, some flavored coffees, some dark roast, some medium roast. There's even a, a light-ish roast. That one's called the Thor. It's a wet process blend of uh, blend in high. It's uh, wow. I'm gonna try that again. It's wet process blend, higher in caffeine, lower in acidity, rich tasting, filled with fragrance, and currently in my bloodstream. That's right, currently in my bloodstream. Uh, so you can find that coffee and a bunch of other coffees over at the Iron Bean Coffee Company. That's ironbeancoffee.com, America's local coffee roaster. It's going YouTube and fellow sloop cats in the studio. See, so once again, Kyle, I'd like to point out to you that you aren't a sloop cat. They are the sloop cats. We. That's that's that we're we're the host. I know. They're the fans. Yes. I know you're an avid listener to yourself. <laughs> so, you know, because Ka, you know, Kyle's Ka, a little like that, if we're being honest. Spends too much time in the mirror. Um yeah. buys buys all the good hand and face creams. Um if you don't if you don't Thank know you those hands mo moisturize. <laughs> if you guys don't know Kyle in real life, uh, that's all funny because it's the exact opposite of the truth. <laughs> <laughs> and quite frankly, although not to a T accurate to me, much closer to me. All uh, right, we got a lot yeah, to get yeah, through, yeah. so let's go ahead and start the show here. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing all right over here. How are you doing today, Jared? You know, I don't really have much in the way of complaints. Um, it's uh, it's a bit rainy here. That one's for you, Sunguard. That one was just for you. Uh, yeah, well, we we had a chance of tornadoes here yet on Saturday, so. Uh, you, you know, I was about to follow up to that, but we're done with the weather talk. We're done. Uh, <laughs> I tried Sunguard. I, I, we gave him a little, uh, the, uh, we have a lot, Kyle was right. We have a lot to get to today. This is going to be one of our first 100% football episodes in a long time. We, so, you know, we were doing the March madness thing for a while. Um, you know, Ohio state basketball was incredibly entertaining, obviously let us down in the, in the, but, but we, 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 we did the postmortem on basketball last week. So if that's what you're looking for today, go listen to last Monday's episode. This is 100% football. I guess 99.9% .9 after I just said that. So 99.9% .9 football. From here on out, 100% football. 
Kyle, last week uh, we were sort of talking a little bit about, you know, th this and that. And, you know, I kept saying over and over again, we we're talking about some of the players. I kept saying over and over again, oh, man, I really I just I want to go in depth on this position. I want to go in depth on position. I want to do like an in-depth position by position. We don't have enough time to go as in. Oh, guess what? Now we're doing it. Yeah, but let's let's get right into that here, Jared. Where should so we start? We are well over a week into practice right now, and just a lot of buzz going on. And any sites that you visit, uh, I personally um, recommend the Buckeye Scoop. Uh, a lot of great information there, uh, and if you are a subscriber there, you get a lot of great, great insiders by the great people over at the Buckeye Scoop. But, but yeah, just, just a lot for the of record. A lot of this, a lot of all, all, well, most, uh, a lot of the information being uh, talked to will be sort of pulling from here is either from and most of it. Like Tony Gerdeman is essentially the shadow third member of this episode of the podcast because mm, yes. of how much of his reporting and articles and everything that we're leaning on. So shout out. Uh, Tony Gerdeman and the entire Buckeye Scoop, who, like I said, are essentially the third member of this podcast today. Yes, yes, gangland, exactly. Tasty, tasty nuggets all, all over the uh, Buckeye Scoop. You know, here. there might be a little bit of a sprinkling of chicken nugget in here, too. I'm just, you know, a little bit. All right, let's let's get into it here, Jared. Our favorite position here, the quarterback. Not my favorite position, but, okay. you know. Uh, <laughs> well, it's going to be the topic to talk about in the spring with Justin Fields leaving here. We got three, we got a three quarterback battle here. CG Stroud, Jack Miller, and Kyle, great name, McCord. Yes. Uh, to no one's surprise, to no one's surprise, uh, Kyle McCord has showed up into camp and has so far been the real deal. Uh, that's, no, no one's surprised. Five-star quarterback coming in. But, you know, sometimes guys don't quite show up as advertised or maybe they, you know, fart around before camp because they feel like they already have it made. Exactly. Because you, you just never know. Although they, they were high on Tathan for a long time in camp, too. It's not. Anyway, we're, we're not talking about that right now. Uh, so just for the Kyle McCord's now in camp. Uh, and looking good, looking real, real good. Uh, now, do I think he has a realistic chance of starting in September? I do not. I, I, um, you know, I think it's between mostly Stroud and Miller. Mm, that being said, yeah. it's a long spring. I'm yeah. not saying it's impossible, but if you're going to put money on it happening, I would recommend you not put money on that happening. Yeah. All, all get three, really good odds. Yeah, all, all three, according to according to sources, uh, are <laughs> are getting um, equal reps. So Stroud, Miller, McCoy are getting equal reps. Um, all showing um, pretty good response in terms of the read option. Uh, so all three appear again. If you're going by reports, appear to be doing pretty well in the read option. Uh, a little bit about McCord. I don't want to say too much though since it is kind of some of the information is paywall. behind the paywall of Buckeye Scoop. But McCord has, as a true freshman coming in here, done very well here. Um, done very well. Um, maybe not as much when he put that shorter pads on, but pretty doing pretty well as a, a kid who should still be in high school right now. Michigan Bucknut asks, could he get second string? I think that's more realistic. Um, and if there's a decided winner between, you know, I don't know if we even said CJ Stroud or or Jack Miller's names yet, but if there's a decided winner between those two, yeah, I, I think it's especially possible that maybe one of them ends up leaving. Um, but I, I wouldn't I'd say that's probably more likely next offseason as opposed to this offseason, but it's a possibility. And quite frankly, I think it's also a possibility that he beats out one of the two of them. Uh, I think if he beats out both of them, that's maybe of concern for Ohio State fans. Um, mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, no, and that's a good point, uh, Gangland. Um, dependent on 
football IQ. And you might see that as a trend as some, some names that we're going to be throwing around here in today's episode. Football IQ and just overall just smarts in general. Yeah. Is, um, some of the things that's um, been been thrown around here. But yeah. One uh, of the things I think is of interesting note is uh, I've, I have basically Kyle McCord's arm strength apparently is next level. It, even compared to the other two, his arm strength is apparently next level. Uh, that being said, that's being floated around that potentially the roster, the, the team itself might be gravitating towards CJ Miller a tad. So we might, if we're talking about leadership being an important quality and for quarterbacks, it is might give CJ Stroud a bit of a nod in that direction. If we're talking about arm strength, Kyle McCord, apparently may be in the lead in that race. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, it's, it's one of those things you have to keep an eye on. Uh, yeah. And the, the big question here is what will be, let's, let's not, let's not say one, two, three. No, let's say one, two, three. What's going to be the one, two, three coming out of camp? And is there an or? Is it a one A, one B situation? And I, I, I think it's going to be a one A, one B situation. Um, and but I, I do think C.J. Stroud is probably the A in that one A, one B situation. Mm -hmm. One two, one two transfer portal three. It's whoever it's a third. Oh, the third no. I, 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 well, I'll put it to you this way. If one of the red shirt freshmen, as opposed to Kyle McCord, the true freshman, uh, uh, is, is if one of the red shirt freshmen ends up like decidedly in third place, I think it's within reason. I think it's within realistic possibilities that if it's like, for example, just to slot names in there, let's say Jack Miller's number one, let's say Kyle McCord's number two. And like, that's clear and obvious. It's not, it's not two A, two B. It's like one, two, then CJ Stroud. I think it's a possibility he goes. And then you can also just take CJ Stroud and Jack Miller's names and swap them around. I just, I just picked one of them at random. Um, so yeah, I, I, all of this is, is completely like I said, within the realm of possibility, Ohio State yep. does have uh, Jagger LaRue still on the roster. Um, he's a he's a fourth or fifth year senior. He's a senior. I'm, I'm not sure. Fourth or fifth year uh, he played at Texas A&M. So he's on the roster. He's available. He's your chug type guy. Your your gunner type guy on the roster. So they, they do have a, a quarterback in place. To be that, you know, experienced, you know, leader number three guy, as his gangland just said, God forbid. Mm -hmm. Yes. Nope. Absolutely. All right, Kyle. What? Who's number one? Uh, September. What? What? When's When's the first game? Is it like September third? Don't look it up. It's fine. Week one. Game one. Week one. Uh, one you're, of the you're, off by, you're off by a day. Second or fourth. Well, that, that is the question. <laughs> You're up <laughs> the second. Okay. <laughs> um, I, at this point, this, this early on, I, I think it would get the nod to CJ Stroud right now. I, that's what I'm hearing as well. Um, <laughs> didn't our last QB three win as a natty though? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, that's the, of Braxton Miller, JT Barrett. And of course, you know, Cardell Jones. Okay. I took my Adderall today. Um, the, <laughs> none of them were freshmen, let alone true freshmen. Um, that being yeah. said, these are three insanely talented quarterbacks. So, you know, with the because of the insane amount of offensive depth around them, I, I think any one of these three guys could take Ohio State to the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And a, and and that probably says again more about the people around them than strictly them. I think yeah. any one of these three guys could potentially take Ohio State to the playoff. But that being said, I haven't seen any of them play yet, so maybe one of them is significantly more deficient than the others. We 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 don't know. 
Yeah. All right. Um, to spend a whole episode on the quarterbacks, but we got to move on to other positions here, Jared. Uh, oh, let's, let's go on to the running backs. The running backs. Uh, we got six running backs to talk about here, Jared. Uh, of course, talk about Mr. Teague, Mayan Williamson, Steel Chambers, Marcus Crowley, Trey Vion Henderson, and Evan Pryor. No, by Jared. the way, no, Jared. Well, no, Jared. Real, real quick, just Mayan Williams. You threw a son on there. Okay, my apologies. Uh, <laughs> now, Jared, if I told you that Master Teague of all of those of all of those running backs was the fastest running back on that mm-hmm. team. Would you be surprised or are you concerned? (laughs) Those are both good questions. Um, He has reportedly lost some weight or at least trimmed up. If maybe, maybe if he hasn't actually lost LBs. We saw a picture a couple of weeks ago and he looked. I think the the Ohio state PR team is, is uh, trying to push Teague a little bit right now. And I think that's because Ohio state fans have turned on him. Uh, they, they've absolutely turned on him. There, there are some people who just straight up hating, straight up hating on Master Teague right now. So I, I think that the Ohio State media folk aren't blind or I guess deaf to that. So I think that they're uh, trying to maybe give him a bit of a get a, get a bit of a boost. Um, and mm-hmm. it's not to say he's a perfect running back, but. I think he's a lot better than people give him credit for, especially since he's just coming into his third year now. Yep. Um, that being said, I think this, I think this is wide open. Um, now that being said, I think Master Teague starts September first, third, second, second, September second. I, I think mine. Uh, I think mine. Williams uh, looked great when he came in last year. Um, the I, I don't think you should be counting out Marcus Crowley even a little bit. Um, Steel Chambers has had some injury issues. What does he look like on the other side of those injury issues? You know, yeah. can he get back up to full strength? Has missing time during important developmental years? What has that done? To, we don't know. Um, I, I, think, I, think this, that, Hender- I think this. I think this position, Jared, is probably more wide open. In the quarterback. Uh, well, yeah, uh, I guess it depends. Uh, 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 well, let me let me rephrase let me rephrase that because you're not going to have a by share the, by the end of the season. By the end of the season, I think this would be wide open in terms of who's going to get most of the carries, who's going to be the one who gets the most yards of of these six running backs. I think this is going to be more wide open than the quarterbacks in in my eyes. The funny thing is, is that. In recent memory at Ohio State, when was the last time we saw a three deep at running back? We've seen plenty of, okay, J.K. Dobbins, you're you're the guy. Go be the guy for us, J.K. Dobbins. And we've seen plenty of instances in which there's it's been a two-hander. We we saw the two-hander last year. Um, Gangland says J.K in his second year was splitting time with Weber. Uh, so we've seen two handed situations. We've seen, you know, the running back situations. When was the last time we saw like a true, like by committee deep run on, on, on running backs, because I don't know if they've ever been in better position to do it than they are right now. Master Teague much, uh, hide and, Heron, uh, yeah, I mean, that was, but that's still, that's just a two-hander, right? hmm So I guess what I'm, I, I guess what I'm saying here is you have Master Teague, who's better than people think he is. Um, I've, he's, you know, and by the way, the, he had an Achilles injury. Yeah. That Achilles injury <laughs> is devastating for a running back. And it's yeah, kind of like it is, it's kind of like an ACL. It's kind of like the, an ACL. You're not always the best 
you sometimes it takes one year to get back on the field and then an additional year to get actually up to your ability. Sometimes it's that second year after. So will Master Teague two years removed from an Achilles injury be even better? This year this year reminds me a lot of 2010. Okay. Buckeye team. Did, did we have a triple running back in 2010? Well, let, me, let, me, let me read you the names of the running backs that were competing in 2010. Okay. Okay. Uh, Brandon Sane, mm-hmm. Dan Heron, mm-hmm. Jordan Hall, mm-hmm. Jamal Berry, mm-hmm. Carlos Hyde, mm-hmm. and Rod Smith. It, 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 it seems very similar to 2010 when we well, I don't, I don't, saw like. Car- I don't think Carlos Hyde saw much of any action that year, though, did he? No, he didn't. No, but so, like, you hear that list of names, you're like, ooh, like, all of them did see time eventually. Yeah. I, I don't, how, of that list, though, are any of them better than J.K. Dobbins? I, is there a star? Is there, like, Carlos Hyde? is the best guy on that roster, but he wasn't really even playing yet. I'm assuming that's his true freshman year. So let's, I, I, Hyde would turn into that back, but he wasn't that back yet. Mm -hmm. I, is there anyone who's spectacular on there? I I have to go to, I'm I'm really, I'm really curious. I Um, like Dan Heron. I I like uh, Jordan Hall. I think had Jordan Hall stayed healthier. You know, I think he what well, he cut his foot walking his dog. So we, we found out so the, that year it was it ended up being Boom Heron. Yeah. Who ended up getting the vast, vast majority of the carries there. He had 216 carries for eleven hundred yards. And then the next one, minus uh prior, was Brandon Sane at 70 carries. Yeah. So I mean I get what you're saying as far as depth goes, but I think when you look at this list of players on this team right now. I think we look at this list 10 years from now is going to be more impressive. I mm-hmm. think is what I'm saying. Um, all right. We got way off topic there. <laughs> we um, did. Yeah. But uh, that, that's, that's, that was my first thought when I thought of running backs, like, all right. It, it was somewhere around, around 2010. When all right. We, Kyle, had, Kyle, like, we need back on the tracks, buddy, back on the tracks. All right. All right. So we, we haven't really even talked about Henderson or prior yet. Henderson's getting a lot of the press um, yep. during the first press availability of spring camp. They brought out two coaches. They brought out two players. One of the players was Thayer Munford, who I I think from a pure seniority standpoint is the de facto leader of this team, especially on the offensive side. That's that's your dude right there. That that is your dude right there if you're Ohio State. So, yeah, you're bringing out Thayer Munford as one of those two players to be in front of the press. Yeah, you're doing that. Who was the second guy, though? The second guy they brought out was Drevion Henderson, true freshman running back. What does that say? What does that say that you bring out the true freshman running back as one of the first two players to have press availability? It was him, right? I'm not crazy. Or am I? Yes, it was. So what does that say about him? I think that says a lot that you're willing to stick him out there as one of two players. I think later on they did like all of the running backs had press availability and that was different because it was just all of the running backs. But I think that says a lot. And even though Henderson's getting a lot of the press and deservedly so, don't let that distract you too bad from Evan Pryor. Because Evan Pryor's, he's, he's getting overshadowed a little bit and I hope he takes that as a chip on his shoulder because... I, he's a special running back as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Solid reports coming back from about Henderson and Pryor. Uh, Crowley making some splash too. He's at, he's at kind of like that big bruiser. Um, who was it here that said, um, um, yeah, he, he was a big bruiser. There was reports of him making some big hits in practice. Um, some talks about uh, Steel Chambers. Gang, gang and land, I, I think we might have mentioned Gangland, a few times by the too. way, referred to Williams as a like a light Jerome Bettis. Yeah. A slim is uh, the word he used. There have been reports of like, oh, maybe Steel Chambers might be going, to, could be converted to linebacker. Uh, Coach Alford immediately turned that down and said, yeah. nope, 
He's he's stay, he's staying with my group here. You know, what what does he look like healthy? We don't really know yeah. what he looks like with a, a great deal of health behind him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh let's get into the running or the wide receivers here, Jared. So first thing you're gonna notice when you look at the wide receivers is uh just the number of them. <laughs> there's there's an insane number of wide receivers. <laughs> Chris Olave, Demario McCall, uh, Julian Fleming, Garrett Wilson, Jamison William Williams, Cameron Bob, Jaden Ballard, Jackson Smith and Jimba, Mecca Abuka, G. Scott Jr., Jalen Harris, Marvin Harrison Jr., Xavier Johnson. And uh that's just all and Elijah Gardner. And, and that's that's just your that's that's just your scholarship, guys. You got Marvin Davies, Sam. Will I, I, you know, I'm going to stop uh, the. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I don't know. It's it's just the the insane number of wide receivers on this team. Yeah. And, one, one thing one thing Ryan Day went away with last year and he's wanting to go back this year is to return to a six man rotation. Now, I have a hard time him trying to get six six guys rotating when you have two stellar studs yeah and how can you get them off of the field like and why would you want to well, also why <laughs> Did you hear all those names i just said that's why because this <laughs> yeah. isn't just a this isn't just a, a deep roster of wide receivers it's a deep and insanely talented roster of wide i mean kyle it's insane. The number the I, I don't know if there if we look back on this roster 10 years from now, I don't know if we'll ever see a greater collection of wide receiver talent in a room. It's insane. It, it is just crazy. Just the talent here. Uh again, you could spend a whole episode just talking about the wide receivers here. But I will say one thing about here, about this group here. Uh keep your eye on Harrison Jr. Uh, making making some splash early on in the in the spring practice. Yeah, absolutely. I who who do you not keep an eye on? Who do you not <laughs> keep an eye on? Uh, uh it's I mean, it, you, it's just a matter even of if you it's look just at going like to come Cameron it's just going Bob. to come down to who who's going to be making the bigger plays, who's going to be making the most impression here in spring camp. It's it, it's going to be tough cuz this is one of those positions where you have to make every snap count in order in order to see playing time in the fall yeah i just like jameson williams is insanely talented and completely overlooked he's a junior yeah. on this team uh cameron bob in you know kind of like steel chambers had some injury issues and what does he look like after those injury issues um and then just like you have your trio of amazing wide receivers from last year, you yeah. add, a, a, you know, Marvin Harrison yeah. Jr. and Jaden Ballard to that mix. In a Mecca. Of course. <laughs> and, of and, course. and by the way, <laughs> one of the top 10 players in the entire country, period, a Mecca Abuka. What do you do with this list? I, I, I don't know. I just I, I throw my hands up and I say, I don't know. It's if you had to pick three, if Ohio State's running, uh, you know, if you if they're running an eleven grouping, which for anyone who doesn't know is one running back, one tight end, three wide receivers. Who are those three wide receivers? Yeah, well, kind of go, kind of going into this, Jared. I'm going to kind of scroll down a little bit here. Uh, I'm going to skip the. Lineman, real quick here. Ganglin says uh, Olave, Wilson, and Bob. Uh, Kyle, okay. now I need I need you to answer the question. Who are your three wide receivers? All right. Well, Olave and um, Wilson. <laughs> I honestly, from what I seen last year, I might I might give the I might give the knob to Williamson. I might give the knob to Williamson. I, and here's the thing. And who said it? Nomad said it. Jackson Smith and Jimba. That's who I'm saying. But 
Kyle says Williamson. Michigan Bucknut says Williamson. We saw, we saw how crazy fast he was in a couple of his receptions last year too. Yeah, get another year under your belt there. Exactly. You, you no got Mac you got you got yourself slot. a guy who can streak down and open up some lanes there for Olave and Wilson to work underneath. Mm-hmm. I don't think you're wrong. I yeah. I, <laughs> I I just I don't think there's a third answer or, or an mm-hmm. answer for the third player. So kind of going to what I was just about to say here, last year, Ohio State ran a lot of uh, 12 personnel. A lot of two tight ends. A lot of two tight ends. That's that, just translating for anyone who doesn't know. Mm-hmm. Is, will Ohio State find that second tight end? I know that Day loves getting that second tight end there with the type of offense he runs there. So obviously you got, you got the stud in Jeremy Ruckert uh, coming back for his senior year. Who's going to be that second tight end if Ohio State wants to run a 12 personnel? And I have a feeling that we're going to see a lot less of that just because of the group we just talked about and the talent that is there as well. They're, they're, they're still insistent. Uh, we've heard it from Day and Wilson that they're going to be running a lot of 12 personnel, but I, I just don't see it. Mm-hmm. I mean, well, per, per what per what Tony said here, I know to anticipate less 12 personnel than I, what they I, ran last year. Well, you know, rule what's what's rule one, everybody. Let's come on, come on, the chat, the chat. What's rule one? Rule one, the doctor lies. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Who, who got there first? Michigan Bucknut. Michigan Bucknut got there first. <laughs> also, well, no, no, no man, correct. Also, me. that one. That's <laughs> yeah. Uh, Wilson, Kevin Wilson, that is, and they like, oh, yeah, 12 personnel, 12 personnel, 12 personnel, but. With all these wide receivers and all these running backs, I just don't see it. Yeah. Uh, that well, being said, you know, it's Jeremy Rucker. Uh, there's a lot of great conversation about Cade Stover, who moved over to tight end and how good he's looking. And, you know, I think they want him to win that second tight end spot, and he very well could. But I just I don't see taking Jackson Smith Ninjimba, Jameson Williams. G Scott Jr. or Mecca, I don't who whoever that is. I don't see them taking that guy off the field and putting Cade Stover on the field. No offense to Cade Stover, but it's I just don't see it. Mm-hmm. Yep, nope, absolutely. All right, Kyle, let's uh let's do a quick ad break, then let's come back and talk about the offense. I was gonna say, let's do the offensive line, man. Finish up the finish up the offense, and then we could do a, an ad break. Okay. Let's do that. All right, offensive offensive lineman here. Uh, uh, let's well, see I some said that in the wrong area. Yeah, you, you keep did. talking. Yes. You keep talking. <laughs> uh, um, Why well, you correct that? So name names that's been thrown out here shouldn't be a surprise to a lot of people. Uh, well, first off, Harry Miller um, not practicing this spring, but as long as he comes back healthy for for fall camp or summer camp, however you want to define that, Harry Miller's job for the center there. Uh, other positions that we've seen here, Paris Johnson going to get the nod for the, for, um, guards position, uh, Munford at right tackle NPF at left tackle, and just a lot of practice between Matt Jones and Josh Fryer so far. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think we, I think we've in the past done a prediction here. Um, we got, we got question. Um, Munford, Jones, Jones, Johnson, and PF. Um, I, I, by the way, what you're saying appears, uh, uh, Stuart, where he, he said Mun left to right, Munford, Jones, D Jones, M Jones, Johnson, and PF. I, I think that's the way they're going, but I, I really would pref. Actually, here's the thing, because a lot of people were talking about wanting. Wait a minute, you said Dwan Jones at left guard. I think Matt Jones is the guy who's getting more of the reps at guard. I think they're trying to keep Dwan Jones at tackle. Um, yeah. yeah, they're, they're yeah, I, I've been seeing that they're wanting um Matt Jones out there. No, I think it's so I, I, I what I think it's going to be is going to be Munford, then Matt Jones. Harry Miller, um, Paris Johnson Jr., 
NPF mm-hmm. at right tackle. NPF. Uh, that that looks to be what they're trying to happen. Um, the I think that with Paris Johnson being, or rather with with a uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm sorry, I said it right. With Paris Johnson being at right guard, I think they wanted to make sure they had a left tackle trained. And I think that that is why they're going to keep Dwan Jones at left tackle. And I think at that point, then Paris Johnson Jr. becomes your right tackle backup. So should anything happen to MPF, they'll slide out Paris Johnson Jr. to right tackle. And then, you know, they have a lot of good options at guard to then fill in at right guard. Um, So I think they're trying to keep Dwan Jones focused on left tackle right now. And I think they're trying to, if uh, I'm just sort of reading tea leaves here, uh, on the right side, they're going to have NPF as your starting right tackle, but they're going to have Paris Johnson Jr. trained up to be both right guard and right tackle. So he's the starting right guard, but also the backup right tackle. I think reading the tea leaves is what they're attempting to do right now. I don't know, Kai, what do you think? Is that, does that sound about right to you? That sounds that sounds about right there. Um, that sounds about right. Uh, uh, there there could be just a lot of different people who could be plug in to try to fill in for Harry Miller while he, while he's out. So I'm curious to see who's going to step in. Um, been seeing, uh, like I mentioned, Josh Fryer getting some getting some time in there too. So we'll see how see how well he handles that and how well um he looks in spring as well. So yeah, it's you know going to be very curious, but I definitely want by that first game Thursday, September second against Minnesota that we have a defined group slobs that's going to be your starters because I don't want any we, we don't want anybody's like oh maybe we could pl- not sure about the the um, right guard position or whatever case may be. Yeah, uh, chemistry and familiarity along the offensive line is too important. Um, well, especially when you got a when you when you got a new quarterback behind you too. Well, and a first time starting center as well. Mm-hmm. Yep, absolutely. I want I want I want those five guys to be decided on fairly early. Yep. Which I yeah, yeah. All right, now now let's do an ad read. All right, let's let's go and hear from our good friends over at the Iron Bean Coffee Company, Jared. Oh, yeah. The Iron Bean Coffee Company. I already told you why you should buy from them. Premium small batch, organic, USDA, uh, fair trade, uh, free shipping, veteran owned. I already told you. Let's talk about some of the coffees. Uh, I talked about the medium light roast in the Loki. Um, If you want to buy some Nordic God coffee, but don't necessarily. By the way, I I didn't think I liked light roast either, but then I got the Loki and it's amazing. Um, you need recommendations on your next purchase nomad. Oh, okay. Well, which, what do you like? Like you, you can't just say, I just can't just say, come on. I need more information. Dark. All right. Dark. Um, the, my favorite dark roast so far, I think would have to be the, uh, the drink from the skull of your enemy, I think is my favorite dark roast so far. Uh, it's an Indonesian coffee. Uh, it's edgier, smokier, thick, creamy, chocolatey notes of cedar, uh, tobacco, wine, and spice. Uh, it's I'm super into cedar right now. <laughs> just very that's just a weird little tidbit for you. So yeah, I, I am all about. I am you already have one of those. Um, then I would recommend potentially the fierce uh, dark coffee. It's 100 arabica beans. Nothing crazy going on there. You have the Odin on subscription. So, okay, why why do you need, you already have two dark coffees that you're all about. What do you need my recommendation for? Um, Let's not forget about the Integrity, which is the flagship roast of the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Um, It is a uh, mainstay, dark roasted. Uh, He says it makes the best it makes the best uh, espresso. So if you're an espresso drinker, uh, they recommend you use the integrity. So you can find all those coffees and actually a lot more coffees. I barely scratched the surface there. There's, I didn't even talk about the medium roast. I'll get that in the next ad read. 
you can find all of that and more at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, Amo- America's local coffee roaster. This episode is also, is also brought to you by our good friend over at the Mackinac and Barbecue Company, located in Cary, Ohio, right outside of Finley. Um, talk to you about uh, a little bit about some of the seasonings that the Mad Canadian had has to offer. I want to talk about one of my personal favorites um, box sets that the Mad Canadian has, and that is the Just Send It. What is the Just Send It? It's it's a combine of four of his most versatile seasonings. It's an all around great collection. You can do just about anything with these four seasonings. Uh, let's let's go over those four then. Uh, the S and P bud. Um, it's your, it's your typical salt and pepper, but they just have a few supporting spices that go along with it. That, that goes along with every, every, every good, um, barbecue that you're about to do. Uh, the snoring heat, one of my personal favorites, um, over at the mad Canadian, it's a, he said it started off with a taco seasoning, but quickly became one of his favorite from using it from tacos to chicken wings to everything in between there. I personally put that on burgers. It gives it that little bit of extra kick. It's a right amount of spice and heat. Or you can go with the Cajun, the third of the um, Just Send It spices here. It has an extra something for your weeknight meals. It gives your food that New Orleans treatment with Cajun from the Mad, Can- from the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. It's great on chicken, fish, steak, and pork. And the fourth of this um, box set here is the smoked. It's their all around great um, seasoning that he uses around his barbecue pit, um, blended with smoked paprika. And um, it's seasoned to great taste so that your food on your food, so that no matter where you're cooking it, um, great on steaks, porks, chickens, burgers, and Pretty much anything you want to put on that grill there. Uh, check out that box set and much, much more over at themadcanadianbbq.com. Again, that is themadcanadianbbq.com. All right, Kyle, let's talk about that defense. Defense. Yes. Defense. I'm All right, excited. let's talk about, Jared, our defensive slobs and i apologize if there's any noise or is a storm that all of a sudden coming through here so another weather talk here but um let's we're talking about the defensive slobs here just, just um take note let's start with the how defensive dark let's, my room is and how bright your room is that's because i just turned I know, on the light you. right now i right, sorry, just focus, turned it focus. on that's my fault that's my fault focus uh <laughs> defensive ends here uh oh, Perry smith defensive ends John like, Baptiste, Jack Sawyer, and Noah Potter. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> defensive ends, man. Uh, here's the thing. Like, it seems like Zach Harrison seems like Zach Harrison's team to take over. Okay. I, I just, it's the vibe I'm getting. I think that he is going like. He's breaking through this year. I'm all about Zach Harrison right now. I think Noah Potter, I think it's I think it's time for him to step up. And then there's Jack Sawyer and all reports, all reports coming right now. Saying Jack Sawyer's going to be a dude. He's already yeah. a dude. And what was that? I, I read something on the uh, on the Buckeye scoop about just how far ahead Jack Sawyer is already from a just a football IQ standpoint here. He's just ready to go right there. He has the mindset. He has the physicality. He's ready to just to plug in and go. And by the way, I didn't mention Tyreek Smith's name yet. Um, I think that was a, a great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who's that? Gangland says he was held so much last year. Yeah. Um, Tyreek Smith, I feel like is probably your de facto leader in that room right now. Um, not that it's a overly young room, uh, John Baptiste Fries in his fifth year, uh, Zach Harrison's in his third year. Uh, Tyler Friday is a senior, I believe a fourth year senior. Uh, so the, yeah, uh, sure. Uh, don't, don't, don't number the rules for me. Nomad. How dare you? Uh, so I, I think this is a 
This is a room with options. This is a room with options, but I think, I think Kyle and agree or disagree with me on this. It's Zach Harrison and, and Tyreek Smith. Zach Harrison more on that rush because they they typically will do like one side's a little bit more of a rush end and the other guy's a little bit more of an anchor. So you got your, your yeah. Um, so I always just say like your rush end is your like quintessential Chase Young, Joey Bosa type. Um, and your more anchor end is more your um, Cameron Hayward. Or, um, yeah, a lot, lots of great guys have played that side. Uh, well, here, here's something interesting, too. I know last year so we talked about it, Tyreek Smith is more that anchor. And yeah, I already said that. Sorry. We'll talk about that here. We'll talk about this group um, after this year. But are there two just cut up and uh, just ready to go defensive tackles that ready to go compared to what we had last year. There's Can one. any of these defensive ends come in and be that rush packet that we saw a few years ago with, um, with Bosa, where you plugged in pretty much three, four defensive ends and just rushed the quarterback. Cause that was one thing that yeah. we didn't really see a lot last year. There was a lot of pressure. And I think we mentioned it last week's episode. There was a lot of pressure from the defensive line, just not enough in that stat book to, to showcase the guy they move inside. I think is typically more your anchor defensive end. So in yep. that case, I think it's Tyreek Smith potentially who you see moved inside. Um, that being said, I don't think, uh, you know, I think you, you also look at guys like Noah Potter or, or Jack Sawyer. I, I think they'll just be looking to get Jack Sawyer on the field anytime they can. Yeah. Taekwon, Taekwon Lewis uh, is another great example of a great, um, like anchor side yes. defensive end. It gets all the work done right in the middle and doesn't, doesn't see the stats to, sh to show it, but man, you, you look at the film and you can just see just there's that big guy just clogging up all the holes there. Yeah. Um, so uh, to me, the two guys who you, I think are your like number ones are Smith and Harrison. I would um, agree with that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, they're going to try and get Z Jack Sawyer on the field. There's no doubt in my mind. Um, I mean, Noah what, Potter, we can't, we can't forget about Noah Potter. I mean, just a great guy, a great guy who has a year, two years actually under his belt too. This could be the year. Yeah. He's had two years under his belt. This is his third year coming in here. Will this be, will this be his year um, that he starts to see the field more often? Yeah, and I think it's just it, you have some of the older guys, your Tyler Fridays, your Jean Baptiste, uh, Javante Jean Baptiste. It's now, it's now or never for those guys. And you know, does that pressure lead to them going next level? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think that's. Uh, I think that's it as far as the defensive ends go. It's it's another stacked room. Um, yep. Yeah, yeah. Defensive room. tackle, defensive tackles. I know it seemed like two years in a row we talked about like how stacked and how deep the defensive tackles are. What about this year? What about this year? Uh, Garrett is out for the spring with a lower body injury. Going to get fine. some more. Going to get some more opportunities for the younger folks here. Who who are we to expect this year? I think this is, I think it's a great deep room again. I, I I would have maybe been slightly concerned had Haskell Garrett not come back, but he did. Um, I think we're seeing Vincent come in to his third year, and I think that's that's huge for a defensive tackle. Uh, you have Antoine Jackson who. You know, this is his put up or shut up year. This is it for him. Um, we can't Ty, forget about Ty Hamilton as well. Ty Hamilton, very highly ranked kid out of Pickerington, coming into his second year. So the defensive tackles, you don't you don't expect a freshman defensive tackle necessarily to step in right away. Well, you're no longer a freshman. 
you know, does Ty Hamilton start to work his way into a heavier rotation? Um, Cage has always just been a, a solid guy. That's, you know, I, not, a, not a spectacular guy, but a solid guy. Um, so you, you look at this group here, and it's just a lot of veteran uh, group here. To mention Vincent Jr., Jackson, a graduate, uh, Garrett, a graduate, Cage, a senior. A lot of veterans here. Yeah. And and I think at I, I what you see are the two graduates in there, and it's their position to to lose. Mm -hmm. Right. Is that uh, is that fair? Yes. Uh, Gingland asks, who's the freshman tackle that had that has been turning heads? Well, the two freshmen right now it's um it's Williams and and uh Kowan. Which yeah, Jacoby Cohen. Um, the Williams is the guy who's garnering a lot of attention right now. Yeah. And that's great. And I want him to do that. I just I I don't see him. I don't see him getting significant time this year. So no. is he turning a lot of heads in camp right now? Yeah, he sure is. And that's great. And we love talking about the new shiny freshman because of course it's some it's someone new to talk about, and that's always fun. Yeah. But well, take that information, put it in your back pocket, and we'll bring it out at this time next year. I, yeah. I, I don't see him cracking the lineup right away. Yeah, he, he is he is a big guy already. I mean, 6'3", 330. He's actually the biggest guy <laughs> on, on, the, um, on the defensive tackles right now. So, yeah, he's, he's already the biggest guy coming in as a freshman. <laughs> I, I think All it's, right. yeah, I just, but I, but again, I, you know what? Prove me wrong. I yeah. want to be proven wrong, but I, I just, I don't, you don't see freshman defensive tackles get significant snaps too often. Yeah. All right. Um, going from a veteran line to a not as experienced line here, uh, the yeah, linebackers. It's, it's, it's filled with upperclassmen, but not, not, not a whole lot of snaps in here. Nope. Nope. Um, we, we got this. This is really the year we, we we've mentioned a number of um, different players on different positions, but in this position here, the linebackers, it's got to be um, it's got to be Mitchell. This has got to be his year to really show up here. We got a really highly touted linebacker um, his fourth year now. This is this has got to be his year to really put up or shut up. I mean, it literally is. This is it for him. There, there's no NCAA waiver. That's going to let him come back. Um, you know, same thing with Dallas Gant as another guy who we heard so much about Kevon Pope, another guy who we heard so much about. Yep. These are three really good linebackers allegedly. And they were all highly recruited. We've heard great things about them when they've been on the field. They've looked good, but we haven't seen them on the field. We we had that young group who were like this impenetrable, seemingly allegedly uh, group that couldn't be penetrated. And, you know, they took up those starting spots for like three years. And. You know, is it. Is it a not wanting to replace those guys who weren't always consistently all that great or could the, the Pope's and the Mitchell's and the Gantz not take those spots from them. So what, what's, what was happening there? The linebacker room, I dare say, underperformed the past couple of years, although it was a lot better last year as opposed to the year before. Um, the. Was no one the next class down able to take those jobs? And if so, why not? So I mean, you want to that? talk about put up or shut up? Mm -hmm. Well, there, there's your trio of linebackers, all three seniors. All yep. three pretty highly talented coming out of high school if, with one if you year wanna, to prove it. If you want to name that could um, see some time from any of those uh, seniors, uh, look no further than Tommy, good old Tommy Eichenberg. Uh, getting, getting a lot of, getting a lot of good praises um, saying he's just 
a very, very smart, again, football IQ type of player and a name to really keep an eye out for. I can, Bert, who do you, would you uh, I didn't think he was a senior. Who, who do you mean he? We Mitchell moved on from talking and, about the senior. And, yeah, he's not. He's not. He's a yeah, he's player. not. Yeah. We moved he, on from the senior conversation. Yes. I can three heard, seniors he, are Mitchell, Gant, and Pope. Yeah. That if there was any linebacker who who's not a senior could take one of those um positions away from one of those seniors. So if I didn't make that clear, I, I apologize. Maybe maybe it's some of the um drink I'm drinking, I don't know. But um <laughs> uh much uh, much like when we were talking about the defensive tackles and we were talking about uh, Williams coming in as a freshman, turning heads, looking really good. Um, in this linebacker room right now, you have Reed Carrico, who has also come in and is also looking really good. Um, that being said. I don't see a freshman getting a ton. Of, there's a lot of a lot of people in this room. A lot of them like needing to make their impression. I think if Cody Simon, a true freshman, comes in and starts right away, I think that says something pretty terrible about all the other guys in the room. Um, and, and I just kind of refuse to believe that's a possibility. Um, yes. So I think Reed Carrico, much like uh, we were talking about Williams, the defensive tackle, it's looking really good in camp right now. Take that information, put it in your back pocket. Uh, we'll talk about that again next year, I think. Uh, maybe he comes in, does some good stuff in special teams. Maybe he makes some splashes in some in, in some garbage time. Um, but yep. uh, just want to throw it out there that uh, Carrico is looking really good. Yep. All right. Defensive backs, Jared. Uh, are we start in corners or safeties? Let's let's start with the corners here. Who do we got? Who do we got from this very, very young defensive back group here? Uh, Seven Banks, uh, Chavos, Martinez, Watts, Johnson, Burke, Williamson. I've been, I've been corrected on this. Cavazos. Three syllables. Cavazos. 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 Yeah, I've been corrected on this. Um, All right. Uh, yeah, Seven Banks, I think, makes a big leap this year. If we're talking about the guy who goes from toughest name in the program, I, I think that's probably not true. But, uh, you know, this is the Sloopcast, so they're all tough names. Uh, Seven Banks, however, relatively easy. Uh, I think he's the guy who goes from, like, off of the NFL radar right directly onto the NFL radar. I, I think is the type of season I'm expecting from from Banks this year. Uh, Cavazos, not a freshman anymore. You're a second year player now. Legend, I think it's it's time for him to get on the field. Yes, healthy now too. Uh, I think it's it's a great year to be own. If you want to own stock in someone right now, I think. Banks and Cavazos are two guys you want to own stock in right now. Uh, you also have, let's see, on the corner, in the cornerbacks, you have Cameron Martinez. Again, may, not, not quite as high as him I, as I am on Cavazos, but true freshman, uh, no longer a freshman, redshirt freshman now, second year player. It's time. It's time. Um, uh, you know, I like I said, not quite as high, but but they're nonetheless uh, mm -hmm. Hickman or ransom. Uh, they are both safeties. We'll, we'll get there. Um, yeah. And one, one thing that, that um, coaches are really looking for with these corners is that can they play man? That that's got to That's the bread and butter that they're wanting to keep pushing as we saw last year and more so this year or this upcoming season too. Who can play? Who can play man to man? Because more often you can play man to man, the more opportunities you're going to be able to free up an extra linebacker or be able to maybe do an extra blitz from a different position to get in there. If you can play more man to man here, 
So that's that's going to be the question here. Who's going to be able to step up and be that guy? As Jared said, maybe it's Banks. Maybe it's Legend. It has to be Banks. First and foremost, it has to be Banks. This it's Get more press. Yeah. It ha- yep. it has to be Banks. The question is, who's that number two guy? Yes, and that, and that and that's one of our questions that we want to see get answered in this spring. Um, will a second reliable corner emerge this spring? You know, we're we're looking at uh, Tyreek Johnson, who I feel like every year is the year he's going to step up, and maybe this one's actually it. Um, yep. You have Cam Brown who, you know, isn't participating in, who isn't participating in the spring right now. Blew mm-hmm. out his uh, Achilles. He'll, he'll, he'll be back. He'll, he'll be around. I don't know if he's, the Achilles is tough for a corner. I don't know if he's going to be ready to, even by fall, if he's going to be ready to be on the field all the time. They might have to ease him back in. So I think Cam Brown has the potential to be that guy. I just don't think he has the potential to be that guy in September. Um, no. So you have to, in my mind, if you're looking for the second cornerback, I think Cavazos and Johnson are the two guys who you're probably watching the most closely um, with. I think after that, you then start to look at maybe some of your other young guys. Uh, Ryan Watts is a red shirt guy. Denzel Burke is is on the team right now. He's the only you know, they they have a few corners in the class, but but Burke's the one that's in spring camp right now. So where where do we see Burke coming in? Yep. All right, in our in our safeties here. And by the way, just just for the record, it might might feel a little late to be saying this. We're basically only talking about the guys who are in spring camp right now. You know what yes. I mean? Like we're we we've not even mentioned if we're talking like defensive ends and defensive tackles there's a lot of recruits who whose names the true freshmen coming in who we not even talked about because they're not with the team yet yeah. so there's even more talent coming mm-hmm. all right our safeties here uh free safety we have here Josh Proctor, Bryson Shaw, Jansen Dunn and in our corner or co- excuse me our cover safety we have Ransom Williamson and Hickman well, first and foremost, the free safety is Josh Proctor. Uh, that's a guy who looked much like seven banks from like week one to the playoffs, just improved immensely. So yep. I really like Josh Proctor. He's a senior this year. Uh, I, I think once again, another undervalued stock in in Josh Proctor. Mm-hmm. Great. So yeah, the cover safety, Ransom, Williamson, Hickman. I think. It's, this one's really up in the air here, to be honest. A lot, a lot of talks about Williamson looking a lot better this spring than he has in previous years. I mean, this dude's a senior this year. Another yeah. guy put up or shut up a year for him. Yeah. Will he be that guy or will it be Ransom to really um, take that position and just Williamson just being on that sideline again? And I wouldn't rule out Hickman either. Ronnie Hick, mm-hmm. uh, Ronnie Hickman, redshirt sophomore. He's coming into his third year. I, I wouldn't rule him out. Um, Gangland asks, could Ransom farewell in the slot or is that a pipe dream? No, I think he's, I think that's the, expe- it's not a pipe dream. That's the expectation that cover safety plays a lot. will come up and play man a lot against slot guys, tight end guys. Um, that's the expectation for Ransom. Uh, so yeah, the, the, the cover safety plays a fair amount of like nickel corner. Um, so yeah, I think you will absolutely see him up in the slot. Yep. All right, Kyle, uh, that's, that's all of our positions. We, we know what's happening with the punters and the kickers. There's only, there's only one scholarship player at each of those positions. So we, we know what's happening there. Uh, so let's get into some Ask Sloopcast, uh, running a tad long. Um, yeah, once, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, okay, fine. Let's talk about the long snappers. Gangland wants to hear about the long snappers, everyone. I'm sorry, we're going over, we're going to go even more over because 
gangland has to hear about the long snappers. There's 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 two guys. <laughs> there's two guys. I don't believe either of them are on scholarship. Um, there's Bradley Robinson and Rowan McCullough, who, yes, is the the younger brother of the previous long snapper uh, or not. Pre- it was two years ago, wasn't it? All right. I, I don't remember, guys. There's not, your two guys. I'm not a long snapper expert. All right. I'm over it. All right. Let's get into the questions here. Let's get into the questions. Uh, gangland. Uh, who wins the who wins the job in the fall? Meatball or Teague ball? Uh, it, Teague. It's to start, Teague ball. September 2nd, you're starting running back. will be Master Teague. Now, how what percentage of the carries does he get is is still up in the air as far as I'm yep. concerned. Who's getting the majority of the carries in uh, November? I think that and who's starting in November, I think, is is even more open to uh, discussion. But September 2nd. Is starting running back, I, I fully believe will be Master Teague. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, who wins the guard job, Jared? Dewan or PJJ? PJJ. Agreed. Uh, they're keep, they're going to keep Dwan at tackle for now. Yep. Could Cody Simon be a Raquan McMillan type of guy for our defense? Uh, I mean, that's the expectation, is it not? Um, that that's the expectation. Uh, yeah. Uh, could he be? Yeah, I think he can. Will he be? Ah, oh, man. I wish I knew, but I think he can be. Yeah, I yeah. I, I really do think he can be. Which which freshman wide receiver gets the most playing time? That's I don't know, man. I I, I don't know how I I don't know how much playing time last year's freshmen are going to get. I was going to say I'm almost neither, mad at Chris Olave neither. for coming back. Almost. I said almost. I said almost. But I'm almost ne- mad at Chris Olave for coming back at this point. The answer is maybe neither. No one. Uh, there, there's three. There's three. Yeah, there's no. My interpretation was that neither would see the field <laughs> because of how talented. Yeah, but my this is a semantic semantical. I, I can't say it. There's three, so you don't say neither. You'd say none. None. Yes. Neither is only if there's two. Well, if I if I were to pick one, <laughs> if it's of those freshmen, part, I, I you would go with your top ten guy, Emeka. Uh, is a Mecca in right now though? Because aren't a Mecca's not doing spring ball, is he? I don't think so. Or no, no, my Maybe. apologies. He is. He is. Yeah, 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 yeah. All three yeah. of them are. All three of them are. Yes, yes. Uh yeah, so yeah, give me a Mecca. Uh, okay. it's yeah, give me a Mecca. All right. Um, Stuart asks, when does it become okay to compare football and weather? Uh, when does it, to compare it? I don't know. That That is the correct answer. Nomad. I don't, what? Okay. Whatever. Next question. Always. <laughs> Next question. All right. Um, uh, let's see. Do you see a role for sixth year senior Demario McCall other than kick returner? Punt returner. Ha <laughs> ha, there it is. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> but no, uh, I, I think punt returner, it's it might be just Alave. Alave and no maybe way. um no way. No, no way they're sending him out there to Wilson, return punt. in Wilson. No way. No way. All right. Um why shouldn't Dewan Jones be a starter? Uh because you need someone practiced up to be the left tackle. You need someone who's ready to come in and play left tackle right now. And that's not mm-hmm. him. That's Thayer Munford. He's he's yep. he's an, why shouldn't he start? Because he's not one of your top two tackles. And we don't want to go. We don't want to move him into guard right now. You don't want your best two, your third and fourth best tackles, both playing guard. You you mm-hmm. want at least one of them ready to take over at tackle at a moment's notice. Yep. 
All right. Last question here from Stuart. There you go, Nomad. Uh, <laughs> why do you hate the quarterbacks that you don't think will be the starters? Why do you hate the quarterbacks who you don't think will be the starters? Is that specifically directed at us? I don't hate any of these quarterbacks. Or is he? Is that more of a a general you? Is that like you, the fan base? Because isn't isn't the cliche always that the backup quarterback's the most popular guy in town? Isn't that the cliche? I don't know. I don't hate any of the quarterbacks. Not at this point, but I will. I, I promise you I won't. Unless their name's Tathan. I don't hate Tathan. I feel bad for Tathan. Yeah, me too. I Me too. I, I think he's been m- misdirected. I think he's been misadvised by some people close to him. And uh, I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm leaving mm-hmm. it there. All right, Kyle, that's the end of the show. Yes, that is the end of the show here. Uh before I get into my spiel, if anyone down there in the chat wants to recommend some music, now would be a great time to do it. Yes. I uh, want to encourage everyone to follow us on Twitter. Follow us. Eh, just Twitter's fine. I don't care. More importantly, join the Discord. The Discord's free. You can join the Discord by going to discord.thesloopcast.com. Uh, and, uh, you can just do that there. Make sure to subscribe to both our YouTube channel and the Buckeye scoop YouTube channel, subscribe to both of those and, uh, go to the sloopcast.com. If you need links for any of these things, and if you're not writing down what I'm saying right now, you can simply go to the sloopcast.com and you'll find a directory of links to our t-shirt store. Kyle's wearing one of our t-shirts. I'm not, this isn't my t-shirt. But uh, Kyle's wearing one of our T-shirts. It says we've got barbecue back here or just we've got barbecue. Uh, the we have a bunch of cool stuff, both in our official Sloopcast merch store and the the 20 or excuse me, 20, the 70, 71 uh, T-shirt store, which is sort of our offshoot. This isn't podcast merchandise, but it's still merchandise to support a podcast thing. It's, it's, it's a little offshoot. But anyway, it's just the uh, merch.thesloopcast.com. And then, like I said, you can just find all those, find all of those links at thesloopcast.com, including links to our patron, Patreon. Uh, so if you want to join those uh, wild folk down there in the chat, get my, there we go. Uh, then you can go ahead and uh, do that by signing up for our pa- Patreon for as little as $3 a month. And if you do a whole year up front, you can actually save a few bucks. I forget exactly what the percentage is, but you can pay for the whole year up front and save a few dollars. And uh, that's uh, that's it. That's all I feel like doing. Kyle, what's in Kyle's corner? Um, not too much. Um, something, some news in the some news that came about that I don't really want to get into. But um, our favorite tight end, Nick Vanette, signing a three year contract with the Saints, and Eli Apple heading on back to Ohio to join the Bengals for a year. And also I want to give a shout out that, um, well, all the freshmen got to choose their numbers, Jared. I will give, I will give a shout out to Mr. Henderson for choosing a good number. <laughs> One of Kyle's favorite numbers. Well, it was, it was the number I wore in football. So I'll, anytime, anytime a Buckeye wears number 32, I'll give, I'll give a, give a thumbs up to them. There you go. But that's it. That's all I got. Um, we are way over on time, but I will I'll let you finish it off, Jared. Uh, real quick, uh, Stuart underscore E4 US vet says Twitter is for fake followers. Discord is where friends come to bullshit. Yes. So I, I've never heard it summarized better in my life. <laughs> uh, it's it's more of a that. it feels more like the early days of Twitter where it felt like a big community. But now it's just not anymore because that's just not what Twitter is anymore. It's just an outrage box there to make you feel bad about everyone, including yourself. Uh, so yeah, come join the Discord. It's 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 a it's a fun little family gathering of of Ohio State fans. And uh, I guess I guess that's it. Uh, the uh, Nomad recommended the Tillers. Uh, the Tillers are from Cincinnati, Ohio. Pulled up their Bandcamp page. 
Uh, we'll be playing one of their songs. Let's see. They've been tagged with folk, acoustic, Americana, Americana roots, bluegrass, country, folk, jazz, roots, and Cincinnati. Uh, I've never heard the Tillers before, but I'm going to, I'm going to trust, I'm going to trust Nomad and, and roll with it. And, uh, hopefully it's good. And if it's not get mad at Nomad, not me, I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> I'm sure it's fine. So, uh, we'll be playing the Tillers. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is the Tillers. You're welcome, Nomad. I don't know if that was a sarcastic thanks or not, but I'm, I'm just going to take it as genuine and say you're welcome. I want to take a nap. All right. Uh, YouTube, y'all are great. Make sure to, like I said, follow us everywhere. I guess you should also like the video or excuse me. Um, I, I need to do the YouTube thing of like, yo, smash that like button. You have to smash it. You can't you can't click it. You can't press it. You have to commit like an actual act of violence against against the the like button. The you like gotta smash subscribe. it and leave a comment down commit, below. Commit a genocide against the like button and uh leave a, a comment down <laughs> <below>. <laughs> drop a nuke mm -hmm. on that like button. It, I it just keeps escalating. <laughs> All right, well, let, let's, use let's a low, before it escalates any further. Use a low orbit ion cannon against that like button. <laughs> right, oh, let's end boy. it before it gets any worse. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, I'd like to thank the Tillers for ending today's show. And uh, we want to thank the Iron Bean Coffee Company for sponsoring today's show. Uh, let's see. We talked about why you should buy from them. Veteran owned, Ohio based, fresh and organic and all of that stuff. Talk a little about the light roast and the media or in the dark roast. So now let's talk about some of the medium roast coffees, uh, the medium roast coffees, including uh, maybe all right, I have two, two of the mediums. Two of them are my favorite. I, I can't choose between the two. I just can't. There's the cast iron, uh, which is a medium roast. 100% single origin um, Arabica beans are, yeah, Honduran Arabica beans. Uh, it's it's what's in the coffee and queue. If you've ever had that from our good friend over at the Mad Canadian. And it's it's just sort of like a straightforward, simple, medium roast. Um, but obviously, it's straightforward and simple aren't, aren't bad things by any means. Um, and then the ride or die is also amazing, uh, gentle, distinctive version of the classic American breakfast cup, uh, Brazil, Brazilian yellow bourbon, coffee bean, uh, suburb smoothness and flavor. I can't decide which one of those two are my favorite medium roast, but they're both excellent. Um, I've also had the rage against the dying of the light, and I thought that was tremendous as well. Just because it's not in my top two doesn't mean it's not probably better than what most people are drinking right now. I'm just saying it. If this coffee is probably better than whatever you're drinking right now, unless, of course, you're already made the switch over and are drinking coffee from the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Uh, so if you're already doing that, then maybe not. But if you're not, this is probably better than whatever coffee you're drinking right now. I'm just going to say it. It's it's better than whatever you're drinking right now. You can buy some for yourself over at the Iron Bean Coffee Company. It's ironbeancoffee.com, America's local coffee roaster. This episode was also brought to you by our good friends over at the Med Canadian Barbecue Company. Talked about their first of their three box sets. Um, the third one, of course, is the whole hog, which is one of each of the great seasonings. But I'm going to talk about probably my favorite of the box sets here, and that is the sweet heat, or as I like to call the wing set. Now, why do I call it the wing set? Well, it's, it has a little bit of everything for your wing sets. It's a little heat, some sweet, some both. 
Um, you get you get four great seasonings, um, including the Four Horsemen, which is probably the, his hottest seasoning. Consists of four different hot peppers. Um, don't worry about it. Um, if it's just too hot for you, you're going to enjoy that. You're going to enjoy that that heat that lingers, but still gives you that flavor that wants you to grab some more. You can go with the Discord. A little bit, a little bit on the um, easier side than the Four Horsemen. Still, still pretty spicy, but it has that blend that was fantastic. Um, and it has a, it's a little bit sweeter if you're looking for that. A little bit sweeter to put on maybe your ribs or even on a chicken breast uh, as well. Go with the old fashioned. It's it's a most interesting spice. It's maybe called the classic drink, sweet bourbony and the right bit, right amount of bitter in it. But you can't go wrong with the old fashioned. Or you can go with the two border there. Um, he says the two border is his flagship seasoning. So if you're looking for, hey, which seasoning? Look no further than the two border. Maple sugar, red pepper flakes. He uses it on all of his ribs. Um, gives it that clean, crisp, sweet flavor, while the red pepper flakes adds that just right amount of heat onto his pork. Also goes great on eggs and bacon as well for your you morning right, it routine. <laughs> yeah, it does. Uh, check out those great seasonings over at themadcanadianbbq.com. Again, that is themadcanadianbbq.com. Be sure to use that promo, co- promo code. Sloopcast10, Sloopcast10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered. 